Happy New Year, everyone! In this video, I gathered up 10 of my favorite DIYs from 2021 and I put them all together in one video. Are you excited? Are you ready to party? You know I am. All right, everyone, let's get started. Since Valentine's Day is right around the corner, I figured I'd start with one of my favorite DIYs from last year for Valentine's Day. So I started with a pack of these candy heart uh, garland dishes that they had at the Dollar Tree. I'm sure that they're gonna have them again this year. There's four in a pack, so I took all four of them and I took them apart so that it would be easier to paint. And I painted two of them with the plaster color by Waverly and two of them with the ballet slipper color also by Waverly. After my containers were all dry, I took four of these wooden heart stickers that they have at the Dollar Tree. This year I noticed that they just come in a package. They're not actually stickers anymore. I peeled the foam dots off the back and then using my black paint pen, I just free handed the letters XOXO on the four hearts. I decided to give the heart containers another added texture so I took some regular jute twine and I just wrapped it around the center of the hearts several times and it went a little bit diagonal which I preferred to just hot gluing it straight across the center. Once I had my jute twine in place then I simply hot glued the wooden heart on top of the heart container. To create the garland, I'm using a little bit of jute twine to loosely tie the heart containers to a piece of the nautical rope that you can find at the Dollar Tree. Once I had the first heart in place, I added just a dab of hot glue so that it could stay in place and then I used my ruler to evenly space out the other three containers. I also added a small jute bow on the nautical rope where I tied the original jute piece on. I knew I wanted to hang this garland, so to finish it off, I folded over the end of the garland and then I just wrapped the two edges in the, in the jute twine so that you couldn't see the raw edge of the rope. I did a two-part series in 2021 for pieces that would go in my bathroom. I did one video on decor pieces and one video on functional pieces. And this little bathtub is hands down one of my favorite things from those two videos and I still use it today. I started with a little toy plastic bathtub that you can find at the Dollar Tree. It's in their dollhouse furniture section and it's um, just a regular plastic bathtub. It's kind of shiny so to mat it down I just used the plaster color by Waverly and I gave it two coats on the inside and the outside. And because I love farmhouse so much after my plaster color was dry I used the mineral color by Waverly and I dry brushed it over the whole bathtub. To create a platform for the bathtub to sit on, I took one of these wooden plaques from the Dollar Tree and I gave it one coat of the antique wax by Waverly and then I used a wet paper towel to wipe off the excess. After both pieces had dried, I used some hot glue to attach the bathtub to the wooden plaque and then I filled the bathtub with some floral foam. The last thing I needed to do was gather up some of my favorite pieces of greenery and a few flowers and I filled the bathtub until I like how it looked. For every single holiday, the Dollar Tree brings out these decor pieces that are plastic frames with this garland tinsel just covering the whole thing. Now this isn't really my style, but what I like to do are buy these pieces and then remove the garland tinsel from them, which is very easy because it's never glued on. You just have to unwrap it from the little pegs that are on the frame. So at Easter, they had these egg shapes and I knew that this would create a really cute basket. So I picked up two of the egg shapes and I removed all of that, can I say tacky, <laughs> tinsel garland from both of them. 
After I had all of the garland removed, I needed to work on the frame a little bit before I could get started. So I used some wire cutters and I cut off all of the plastic pegs that were around the outside of the egg. And then there are some crossbars inside the egg that aren't necessary where they kind of divide the squares in half. So I removed those as well. And I did that for just one of the eggs because the other egg I needed to cut a little bit differently. For the second egg shape, I counted up two sections and I cut the top section of the egg completely off from the bottom. And then I just discarded the top because I was only going to be using the bottom from this point. And I did the same thing with the bottom part of this egg as I did with the first egg. I removed all the peg pieces from the outside and that extra crossbar in the center. I took this thicker jute cord that I get from Walmart and it's a good bit thicker than the one from the Dollar Tree. You can see the comparison there. But I had to put my patient pants on because I covered this entire egg and the egg piece in this jute cord. <laughs> That's right friends. Thank goodness for YouTube and Netflix, right? Because I needed some entertainment to get this done. So I started, I glued the jute on originally to the egg and then I had to cut a longer piece because I couldn't fit that roll through the sections. And I just started and I went the whole way around the perimeter of the egg first. And then I went back through and I covered each of the crossbars with this jute cord. And I did that on both pieces. And 16 hours later, look how great they are. I'm just kidding, it wasn't really 16 hours, but it definitely felt like it. One thing I like to do when I'm using jute is clean it up with a lighter. I just take the lighter and I run it along the surface and it burns off all the excess fuzzy pieces. And if there's any hot glue strings, it'll take care of that too. To attach the partial egg piece to the full egg piece I just used a couple dabs of hot glue where the intersections would meet and then to reinforce everything I took some of that thinner jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I just tied it in a few places particularly at the top of the pocket in the basket where the two pieces met so that everything would be held together securely. I kept the decorating for this basket pretty simple. I just used a couple bunches of greenery from the Dollar Tree and then I created a simple black and white striped bow and I attached that to the front of the pocket. The next time you're in the Dollar Tree, don't go past the catering section without checking out some of their dishes. They have some really neat things there that can be transformed into some really fun home decor pieces. So I found this set of triple dishes in the catering section and you can see they're kind of a shiny chrome material. They're plastic though. So I started by taking my sanding block and sanding the bottoms of both of them so that whenever I glued them together, it would adhere just a little bit better. I used a baby wipe to wipe off the excess dust that I created from sanding them. And then I used a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue to give them that long-term, short-term hold that you get from both types of adhesive. After the glue had some time to set up, I took the plaster color by Waverly and I gave the whole piece two pretty thick coats of the color and I made sure that I let each coat dry really well in between because it is plastic so I wanted to make sure that the paint wasn't going to chip off. Once both coats of the plaster color had a chance to dry, I took the elephant color and I did some dry brushing over the whole piece. I kind of concentrated the dry brushing more on the corners of the dishes rather than dragging the paint across the flat surfaces. Another thing you could do if you don't want to distress with paint is because the dishes originally had sort of a chrome look to them. You could take a sanding block and go over the edges of the dishes as well and it would bring out that sort of metallic chrome color that was already on the dishes. I wanted to camouflage the seam between the two dishes where I glued them together. So I took some jute cord and I cut about four lengths of it and I wrapped it around the center of the dish and I just tied it in a simple knot. I decided not to do a bow. I wanted to keep it a little more simple and just do a knot and then I flared out the ends. And I did that on all three sections of the dish. 
To me, this dish seemed like the perfect thing to hold succulents, so I filled each section with some river rock from the Dollar Tree, and then I just tucked a succulent into each dish. It was either last spring or summer that the Dollar Tree carried these bicycle wheel wreath forms. So for this project, I needed one of the wreath forms, a couple packs of the white nautical rope, also from the Dollar Tree. And then I picked up four numbers from Michael's that are the MDF particle board type of numbers. And I got 1776 because I wanted to make this wreath for the 4th of July. So I started by painting my numbers first and I wanted to alternate the colors between red and blue. So I gave two of the numbers a coat of red paint and two of the numbers a coat of blue paint. While my paint was drying, I took a pack of the nautical rope and I found the center point of the rope. And I just marked it with some painter's tape so that I could cut right through the center. And then I would have two equal lengths of the rope. And then I did that with another pack, but I only needed a third piece of the same length of rope but I still did the same thing. I found the center, put the painter's tape, and then cut it so that I had three equal lengths of the nautical rope. Once my rope was cut, I took another piece of painter's tape and I lined the three lengths all together in a row, and I used the painter's tape just to hold them all together. Next, I took the whole bundle and I taped it to my desk so that I could do just a three-strand braid. And if you're not familiar with how to braid, all you have to do is cross the outside section over the center on each side. Now what's really neat about this is because the rope itself is already made of three strands, when you braid them together, it creates a really pretty pattern. And after I have all of the rope braided together, this is what I'm gonna use to put all along the outside of the bicycle wheel. I found it easier to lay the braid down first and then lay the bicycle wheel on top of it. And you can kind of see where the center of the braid is. So everywhere there was a spoke in the wheel, I added a little bit of hot glue to the braid and then laid the wheel over top of it. And then I put more hot glue over top of the wreath form. Now this is the backside. So when you're looking at it, you can see that everywhere there's a spoke, there's gonna be hot glue underneath it and over top of it. And that was just to ensure that that braid stayed in place. Once I had the braid all glued down from the backside, I flipped it back to the front and I just removed that painter's tape and hot glued the six strands of rope down to the form. I wasn't too worried about how bulky it was gonna be because I knew that I was going to cover it up later on. So to cover up that bulkiness, I created just a simple loopy bow using some ribbon that I think I found at Michael's. And I added a dab of hot glue first before I set the bow down and I have some jute twine tails on it. And I used that to tie on the backside just to make it more secure. I wanted to give these numbers a little more character, so I'm using the plaster color and an old toothbrush, and I just dipped the old toothbrush in the plaster color, and then I ran my thumb along the bristles as I held it over the numbers, and then that way it gave a, a paint splatter effect over all of the numbers. I laid the numbers down across the center of the wreath, and I just added some hot glue where the numbers hit the spokes in the wheel. After the hot glue had dried from the front, then I flipped over everything over, and on the back I added even more hot glue just to make sure that those numbers would stay in place. Hey, since we're halfway through the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and go follow me over on Instagram at GlueLala. Thanks everyone. The Dollar Tree always carries different sizes of artwork, and I like to pick up a few because I like to use the frames that are inside of these canvas pieces. 
So I picked up three of the same size square canvas piece and I started by removing the hardware from the back side of the frame and then I used my utility knife to cut off the canvas. Now this first one, I wanted to make sure that I was really careful because I wanted to save the design on this first piece as the focal point of my finished product. Once I had all of the hardware, the canvas, and all of the staples removed from the three frames, I took the mineral color by Weaverly and I gave each frame a good dry brushing of this color. I didn't want a solid coat. I wanted some of that brownish color to show through, but I did a bit more than just dry brushing. So it was somewhere in between a solid coat and dry brushing. Since the focal point of this tray is going to be that canvas piece, I wanted to make it more sturdy. So I cut down a piece of chipboard that would fit inside the frame. And then I used some hot glue to attach that canvas piece back to the chipboard and I trimmed off the excess. Next, all I had to do was run a little bit of hot glue along the back side of one of the frames and reattach that canvas piece. Then I laid the second frame on top of the first one in the opposite direction and I marked with a pencil where I would need to add a few dabs of hot glue. After the second frame was glued down, then I took the third frame and I laid that on top of both of them and I lined it up with the very first frame that was on the bottom. Now you could use this as just a wall hanging, but I decided to turn mine into a decorative tray. So I added some blue yarn on two corners of the tray just to signify where the handles would be. I love using wooden crates in my home decor and I wanted to try to create my own. So I'm using these square wood planks from the Dollar Tree and I'm also using a few of these giant craft sticks that I get at Walmart. I started by cutting the craft sticks down to the size I needed and I wanted to maintain as much length as I could from these sticks so I just cut the very ends off, the rounded ends and because I'm using my paper trimmer I was able to make sure that they were all the same length and I needed nine of these sticks all together. I wanted to create the base of the crate first so that it would be pretty sturdy when I went to add the additional slats. So I started by adding some hot glue to one end of the square wooden plank and I lined my first craft stick up on the surface of my desk. That way I knew that the craft stick would be flush with whatever surface I was going to set it on and it was also flush with the side of the wooden plank. Then I hot glued it to the other wooden plank and then I hot glued the stick to the back side of the crate first. I also reinforced inside the crate with some hot glue just to make it more sturdy. Then I moved on to placing the top two craft sticks. So I just used hot glue again and I made sure that both ends were lined up along the tops of the wooden planks and along the flat side of the wooden planks as well. And again, every time I glued a stick down, I just ran more hot glue along the inside to make it more secure. Next, I just eyeballed the center between the top and the bottom slats and I placed the middle slat on each side. Then after I had the sides built up, I just had to place three slats along the bottom of the crate so that nothing fell through. I decided for my crate that I just wanted most of the wood grain to show through, so I'm doing a pretty heavy handed dry brushing of the plaster color all over the outside and inside of my crate. But because it is wood, it would definitely take stain really well, or you could even spray paint it. To create the handles for my crate, I took this faux leather ribbon that they had sold at the Dollar Tree and I cut a strip down to 12 inches long and I folded it in half so that it would be about a six inch strip. I ran a little bit of hot glue down the center and then I cut the ends off so that they were nice and flush and clean. 
Then to give my handles a little bit of character, I decided to use my Tiny Attacher by Tim Holtz. And I just added a few staples on each end so that it would look like it was stapled onto the crate instead of just hot glued on. But if you didn't want to use staples, you could use buttons, you could use thumbtacks, or you could leave it plain and just glue the handle right on. Dollar Tree really doesn't have a square picture frame. So anytime I need a square frame, I usually just buy a canvas. This is a 12 by 12 canvas that I got from Michaels and I just removed the canvas material off of the frame itself. And the wooden frame that's inside these canvases are really nice. They're good quality wood and they have a little bit of a lip on them so it gives it more character. Once I had all of the canvas material off of the frame, I gave it one good coat of my favorite color, the Plaster Color by Waverly. But of course, again, you could stain it or paint it your favorite color. The Dollar Tree has these really pretty self-adhesive wall tiles and it was the perfect size for this project. But to make this pattern pop out just a bit more, I decided to use that same plaster color and just run a dry brush of that color over the whole thing. For the centerpiece of my frame, I found this metal pumpkin at the Dollar Tree and I just removed the metal hanger that was on the top and the raffia bow from the front. And then I added a few pieces of some leftover fall greenery that I already had on hand and I made a new bow for it out of some lace. Since this wall tile was self-adhesive, I just stuck it to a piece of foam core board and then I cut around the edges. That way it was a little bit more sturdy in the center for where I wanted to put the pumpkin. Next, I just added hot glue to the back side of the wooden frame and I placed the tile and the foam board right to it. Since the pumpkin is curved, I added some tumbling tower blocks to the center of it so that I would have a better surface area to glue the pumpkin to the tile. Now, I will say that the tumbling tower blocks um, stayed okay on the tile part of it, but the part that I had glued the block to the pumpkin, it came off because it's metal. Sometimes hot glue doesn't stick well to metal. So I went back through and I did put E6000 in between the tumbling tower block and the pumpkin and it stayed fine since then. When I saw these mini wooden clothespins at the Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to create snowflakes and turn that into a garland. So to get started, I took six of the mini wooden clothespins and I just gave them a little twist and then that popped the spring right out of the center. So for my garland, I decided just to make four snowflakes, but you could make as many as you wanted to. After I had my clothespins disassembled, I took a length of baker's twine and I folded it in half and I stuck the folded end in towards the center of the clothespin and then I sandwiched another part of the clothespin over top of it and then that way that would create the hanger that I needed to tie it on to my garland. After I had all six of the clothespins hot glued back to back, then I started hot gluing them to one of these snowflake ornaments, also from the Dollar Tree. And I just made sure that I had the top clothespin, the one that had the hanger on it, glued to the top of the snowflake, which is where the hole is if you were gonna use the snowflake as an ornament. And since these snowflakes had six prongs, each clothespin fit on top of one of the prongs. To cover up the hole that's at the top of that snowflake, I just created a simple shoelace style bow out of some of that same baker's twine and hot glued it to cover it up. I wanted a second element on my garland, so I had this chunky gray yarn on hand. I took my roller and since it's 12 inches long, I wrapped it around my roller a few times and then I took another length of the same baker's twine and twi tied it around the center of the loops that I had just created. And if you can't tell, I'm creating a tassel here. So once I had the baker's twine tied around the center, I took another length and I tied it about an inch down from the center of all of the loops just to create a band around the top of the tassel. 
After the band was around my tassel, then I just had to cut the loops and slide them down in between my fingers so that I could even them off. I found the shortest piece and that's where I cut the rest of the fringy, the fringy pieces too. Then to add a little more interest to my tassels, I took some hot glue and I squeezed the two ends of the baker's twine together. And I had a bunch of wooden beads on hand already, so I took three different sizes of wooden beads and I just stacked them from the biggest to the smallest and I strung them on that baker's twine. The last step in completing my garland was to tie all of the pieces on and I just alternated between the tassels that I created and the snowflakes. And every time I create a garland, I always like to have my ruler on hand because it just helps me make sure that I have everything spaced out evenly. And while you're watching me tie all of these things onto the garland, I just want to let you know that each of these 10 DIYs came from 10 different videos that I did in 2021. So I will have all 10 of the original videos linked in my description box below. Last year when the holiday stuff started hitting some of the more expensive websites like Pottery Barn and Wayfair, I started noticing that they were selling a lot of sets of antique looking brass bells. And I knew I wanted to try to recreate those using items from the Dollar Tree. So I picked up two of these plastic bells from the Dollar Tree and I used a combination of this antique gold paint and this truffle color paint. And I did it about three quarters of a part of the antique gold to one quarter part of the truffle color. The only reason I added in that truffle color is because I wanted to deepen up that gold and I also wanted to give it uh, more of a matte finish than a shiny finish. After I had painted on the second coat of that paint mixture, I took more of just the truffle color and while the paint was still um, wet, I ran streaks of the truffle color through the paint mixture so that it gave it a little bit of a distressing and it added in some of those streaks that you tend to see on brass pieces. I needed ringers for inside the bell so I took two of the tumbling tower blocks and I painted those with the same paint mixture of the gold and the truffle. After all my paint was dry, I took some jute twine and I wrapped it around one end of the tower block and then I glued it in the center of the end of the tower block so it looked like the jute twine was coming up through the center. That way it gave me something that I could glue to the inside of the bell so that the ringer could actually hang inside the bell. I cut the jute twine to the length I needed and then I just added hot glue right towards the top of the bell but I made sure to leave the hole that was at the top of the bell open so that I could fish my rope through that. Next I took a length of the nautical rope and I wrapped some scotch tape around the one end so it would be easier to fish through and I just fished it through from the top of the bell in towards the center and I tied a big chunky knot so that it would stay in place and then I just repeated that on the other end. I added a little scotch tape to that end, fished it through and then tied a knot. I didn't care for how unfinished the top of the bell looked so I just hot glued on some jute twine and I wrapped it up until it met with the nautical rope and because they were the same color they blended in well together. I wanted to keep the embellishments on these bells pretty simple and pretty neutral so they could stay up for most of the winter. So I used some garland ties and I cut one in half and I wrapped each half around the top of the bell and then I added in just a few pieces of some Christmas greenery that had a few snowballs on it. And as a final touch I added in a few mini pine cones. Once I had the bells decorated to how I liked, I laid them out how I wanted them to hang. So I wanted one to hang just a little bit lower than the other one. And I wrapped some jute twine around the top of the bells, probably about three inches down from where the fold in the rope was. And then I just tied it into a little bow to add a little more decoration. Thanks for hanging out and crafting with me today. I'll leave some videos on the screen that I think you might enjoy. Have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.